There's no denying that the Toy Story movie franchise is one of the most successful of all time, bringing so much joy to children and adults for over two decades now. You gotta be a real monster if the tale of Woody and Buzz, along with all of the other toys, doesn't pull on your heartstrings. However, there's always been one major glaring question mark surrounding the films. How exactly do these toys come to life? Why would they have human-esque fears, such as dying or being forgotten? Hold on, this is no time to be hysterical. It's the perfect time to be hysterical. It's an interesting question that gets more interesting with the release of the latest trailer for Toy Story 4. In the most recent trailer, we're introduced to a new character, Forky. <coughs> Bonnie, the child who owns and plays with all these toys, brings home a new favorite toy from school, and it's quite literally a plastic sport. Yeah, I know. Like the kind you'd pack with a lunch if you were having soup and a salad and only had space for one utensil. So we're led to believe that these toys come to life when humans aren't around, but now inanimate objects too? I am not a toy. Toy Story is great, but the premise is more than a little difficult to wrap our heads around. Unless there's an explanation for it all. Well, as you probably guessed by the fact that we're still about eight minutes left in this video, we've got answers. Uh, well, we've got potential answers. It all comes back to something called the Pixar theory, which suggests that human emotion acts as an energy source and can bring just about anything to life and give it intelligence. Join us as we look at what really makes a toy come to life. It's no secret that Pixar loves to leave Easter eggs in their films. It's not uncommon to notice a Buzz Lightyear toy laying around the ground in another movie or to see a reference to Up somewhere else. While these may seem just like fun little homages to other successful titles, they're actually more so clues than they are Easter eggs. You see, the placement of these Easter eggs aren't as random as we may think. They're actually strategically placed to follow the unspoken timeline of Pixar films. The first person to make this massive discovery was John Negroni, who actually went on to write an entire book about the theory. So how do we explain Forky? It all starts where many things happen, in prehistoric times with the good dinosaur. In this Pixar movie, we actually see where this alternate reality begins. We see a collection of massive asteroids barreling towards Earth, much like the one that very much did hit the Earth in real life and completely wipe out all of the dinosaurs. However, in the film, the asteroids totally miss the planet. I'm not sure how many history buffs are out there watching, but Earth getting hit with an asteroid and causing an ice age and the extinction of dinosaurs was a pretty significant occurrence in the existence of our planet. In The Good Dinosaur, this doesn't happen, and dinosaurs are able to grow and evolve and prosper. Good, thank goodness for that. We see T-Rexes hurting animals rather than just eating them all like they typically would. We also see them discover and adopt advanced agriculture, learning to grow and harvest their own crops. What The Good Dinosaur really helps us establish is that other species are capable of developing furthered intelligence. This'll come up again multiple times, as typically non-intelligent beings are often given thoughts, personalities, and emotions. About a century after The Good Dinosaur, it's time for Brave, the story of a young princess who's trying to change her fate by not getting married. I don't want to get married! I want to stay single and let my hair flow in the wind! This leads her into a foray into the forest where she meets a witch. Here's the first instance of magic on the Pixar timeline. What's interesting, though, is that the witch doesn't appear to be controlling the magic. Instead, it kind of has a mind of its own. The knives in her shop essentially move and do what they want, even threatening the witch at one point. Uh, hold on just a second. Inanimate objects having a mind of their own? I wonder if we'll see that again in any other movies. All right, so we're two movies in, a couple thousand years in the past, and we've already established that other species can be smart, magic exists, and that humans and animals are both susceptible to magic. Now it's time to jump all the way into the 1960s and meet The Incredibles. How you doing, honey? Do I have to answer? We've seen animals and we've seen humans. Now this film is our first introduction to machines. The power struggle between these three will remain prevalent for the remainder of the timeline, with one's prosperity often coming at the expense of another. In The Incredibles, the villainous Syndrome develops an artificial intelligence robot that eventually ends up turning on him and going rogue. This may sound dark for some kids' movies, but this is a significant moment because it marks the start of humans' demise. You'll understand why in a moment. As the theory goes, humans are used in the Pixar world as batteries. Humans are required for life to exist. Where there are no humans, there is no life. 
At least not when it comes to things like toys, machines, or cars. Animals do just fine without humans, but unfortunately for the animals, that phase is all but over. Just look at the scene in Finding Dory where they're swimming through the sunken junkyard. It's a mess created by humans. Much like our current reality, the Pixar movies depict a sad and slow story arc of humans polluting the planet to the point of animal extinction. In fact, by the time we reach Wally, the humans have completely left Earth. There's no telling how long before Wally takes place, but the humans abandoned their planet. It's safe to assume it was a long time because the humans don't even remember what Earth was like and need to relearn things about their former planet. Psst, computer. Divine dancing. We'll get to Wally in a second though. For now, the humans are gone and there are no more animals, so what's left? Cars. The movie Cars takes place on Earth. It isn't some sort of alien planet because we see a number of notable Earth locations. It's just an Earth devoid of human life. The cars don't quite come to life the way the toys in Toy Story do. They aren't there to serve humans, but rather they remember their past owners and seem to develop personality traits based on their memories. How about some organic fuel? Take a car wash, hippie. There's one extremely head-scratching moment in the movie when Cruz is on the beach and shouts, I didn't want to hit a crab, it was cute. Wait, what? I thought there were no animals. How could there possibly have been a crab on the beach in cars? Well, if you recall the underwater junkyard scene in Finding Dory, you'll remember that the crabs were thriving in the pollution and garbage. Of course they survived, they're crabs. They don't need to evolve and they don't need human energy. In fact, to them, the more pollution, the better. Carves 2 only solidifies this Pixar theory as there's an energy crisis. Humans haven't been around for a while now and their memories are starting to wear off. By the end of Wally, the humans return. However, they come back to a very different world. Keep in mind, this is a post-pollution induced evacuation, so it's safe to assume the planet isn't like it once was. Now, this might sound like a stretch, but this causes humans to turn into monsters. Look, it wouldn't be the first time we've witnessed such a phenomenon. Just look at Jack-Jack in The Incredibles. He turns into a monster on command, which means that sort of transformation isn't out of the realm of possibility. And what are the monsters in Monsters, Inc. suffering from? You guessed it, an energy crisis. And what are they harvesting to run their city? Human energy in the forms of screams and laughter. This once again proves that humans function as batteries throughout the Pixar universe. Human emotion is the one constant throughout all these films. It's safe to say that human memories keep things alive. We see it time and time again without hiccup or deviation. In Coco, you only suffer your final death when you're completely forgotten. Mr. Incredible worries that people will forget him and his legacy. In Toy Story, Wheezy is sick because Andy forgot him. In Up, Carl can't let Ellie's memory die and literally carries it around with him. Wally cares about remembering humans, which eventually leads to a new life and humans returning. In The Good Dinosaur, Arlo is controlled by the guilt and memories of his father. Dory's entire character is based on struggling with memory loss. The one giant overarching theme of the entire Pixar universe is that those who are not forgotten are never truly gone. In fact, when discussing humans as a source of energy, kids' memories are infinitely more valuable than adult memories. You have to understand how lucky you are to belong to a child. Huh? What? In the movie Inside Out, we see Riley's memories classified into easy-to-manage colors. However, by the end of the film, she's growing up and we can see her new multicolored memories. Multiple emotions attached to a single memory would absolutely complicate things if you were, <clears throat> say, harvesting these memories for energy. That's why the monsters in Monsters, Inc. only use children. It's also why the toys in Toy Story get life and start to lose their power as children age and mature. Kids' memories are the cleanest source of energy for a being that feeds off of human energy. So that's the Pixar theory, and it would explain how a plastic spork comes to life in Toy Story 4. After all, humans are an energy source and can give life to inanimate things. However, that shines some light on how these movies make sense and how they aren't just random magical fairy tales. They're actually pretty justifiable and logical. Can you find any holes in this theory? Is there anything we missed that further adds to its credibility? Make sure to drop us a comment if there's anything else we should know. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Also click on subscribe and the little notification bell so you'll know when we release new stuff.